The people that were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. The war of words showing no signs of easing up between the United States and North Korea. The government of Kim Jong-un uh, saying it is planning and may fire missiles close to the U.S. territory of Guam in the Pacific. Well, few people can claim they actually understand North Korea. Dr. John Ishiyama, one of those few. He's a distinguished research professor of political science at the University of North Texas. So the government of North Korea operates on fear. We've heard these stories about what happens when, any, when, when Kim gets any hint that somebody may be even not applauding loudly enough for him, he shoots him. Mm -hmm. That's right. um, what does he fear? Well, uh, you have to understand that Kim Jong-un is a fairly young man who was inexperienced when he first came to office. Uh, prior to 2009, we, uh, there didn't even exist an official photograph of Kim Jong-un. It was rather a surprise that he was named a successor to his father, Kim Jong-il, uh, who died in 2011, and Kim Jong-un, somewhere around early 30s, assumed office. Um, he came to power with very little in terms of a power base, meaning that he had not cultivated connections with the top elite, the top military elite, the top political elite, unlike his father, who right. had two decades. Um, so I think there's a, some degree of insecurity that fuels uh, his desire to consolidate power through fear. So, and, and that's how he does it, is with fear, uh, yeah. saying if you dare even think about defying me, you and your entire family are going to be dead. Which has always been the practice, I think, in North Korea. Right, you know, right. um, it's it based a lot, largely on coercion. The, the CIA would love to see the military overthrow him and somebody more reasonable come in. Do you think there's any likelihood that happens? Uh, no, I don't really think so. I think uh, Kim Jong-un has actually been fairly successful in consolidating power and through two strategies. One is through fear, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is that um, you know, the elite is unified around the idea that the regime must survive because their survival also depends upon his survival. Uh, and I think uh, among the elites within the North Korean state, there's broad agreement that the existence of a nuclear deterrent is the best way to ensure regime survival. Right. It, 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 the president, of course, getting on uh, Twitter this morning. Let's take a quick look at what he said on Twitter. Uh, military solutions are now fully locked and loaded, fully in place should North Korea choose to do something unwisely. Um, you've got two somewhat unpredictable individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the difference between Kim and Donald Trump is a much more structured government in the United States that uh, hopefully is more predictable. That uh, constitutional government that we have checks right. the authority of the executive, which does not exist in, in North Korea. There are, there are no checks on, on the great leader. Um, as President uh, Trump is threatening, Secretary of State Tillerson is saying, S rest easy, there's nothing to worry about. Well, I mean, I think everyone should be somewhat concerned, but at this stage, it's not that war is imminent. I mean, the signs are not there yet. There's not been evacuation of U.S. personnel from uh, South Korea. There have been no warnings to, uh, I, I think, dip, 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 diplomats across the globe. So right. war is not imminent. Right now, what we have, I think, is a war of words. Really quickly, are we at the, at the point of, of, of uh, back in the Cold War days, mutually assured destruction? If uh, He's got the weapons. Right. He can deliver the weapons. Right. We have weapons. We can deliver those weapons. And so if anyone hits the button, we're both dead. Right. Well, I think uh, it's somewhat asymmetric because North Korea's military nuclear capacity, its ability to deliver weapons is, is, is actually fairly primitive. Um, the U.S., on the other hand, could obliterate North Korea from the globe. So I'm not sure it's like a balanced, mutually assured destruction uh, relationship that existed during the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, I think rather uh, the uh, sort of saber rattling now is meant for domestic consumption in both cases. In, in, on both sides. Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's a, you know, Kim Jong-un uh, rallies uh, support for himself by demonstrating uh, standing strong against the West. Uh, uh, demonstrates that uh, they're not going to negotiate away their nuclear arsenal, uh, that this will ensure the survival of the state. And, you know, there may be differences within North Korea, but they all agree on that. Right. But both sides playing to the hometown crowd. That's right. Thanks very much. We appreciate it. We've got more to come here on Good Day.